And we are live on Skills Not Pills for another day of interviews and amazing uh, information and resources and inspiration and stories of people who have overcome incredible things uh, that they were told maybe they weren't ever going to recover from. And yet here they are sharing stories about how they in fact have recovered from those things and are now no longer participating in the paradigm of, you know, the traditional paradigm, go to the doctor, get the pill, stay on the pill the rest of your life, stay in the diagnosis, never change. And uh, so that's what I really love about this movement. I'm really excited. I'm your host, Carrie Hummingbird, and I'm really excited today to introduce you to another one of these amazing individuals who's had her own journey of finding out a lot of things that she didn't know when she started that journey. And her name is Rachel Peterson. So welcome, Rachel. Thanks, Carrie. So Rachel is from Austin Paleo Girl and is a certified holistic health coach trained through the Primal Health Coach Institute. She works with women to help them get thyroid to help them with their thyroid issues, healthy mindset, and weight loss after overcoming her own health challenges. And now she loves cooking for family and friends. She also does Pilates and, and bar classes and travels to beach destinations and speaks about entrepreneurship and women's health. So she's offering a free discovery call today, and we're going to hear about Rachel's story. So tell us a little bit about, you know, this topic of a journey to mental health, wellness, and self-discovery. Tell us a little bit about your story. Yeah, so I was just, you know, every or average adult just trying to make it through everything. Um, and back in 2014, uh, late in the summer, I had a series of several different things, several events happen uh, in my personal life, my professional life, uh, my health. Uh, basically, I went from being, you know, on top of the world, engaged, getting ready to get married to, um, you know, my health tanking out on me, um, my relationship going down in flames, basically and uh losing my job all within a span of a few a few months <laughs> so um i i had no prior history of any kind of depression um or any mental health issues really throughout my life um but because of what happened to me that summer uh i just i i should also mention this is very important piece uh i started to experience insomnia and it just started out as kind of a, you know, like, oh, sleeping less hours. And then it gradually got to the point over the, those few months that I could no longer sleep on my own without the use of medication. Um, so, I mean, I'm going through all of this, you know, this stuff, job loss, um, you know, hypothyroidism, uh, and just, you know, I had uh, chronically low iron, um, vitamin D. And just, you know, not, not feeling great at all. Um, so yeah, that, that led me to basically uh, one day just, you know, being in a really bad place, being home alone, not working, um, trying to take care of myself uh, to feeling basically ho pretty hopeless uh, and calling a, a suicide helpline. Mm because I just, I had gotten to the point, my sleep had just dwindled down to almost nothing. And I mean, sleep is so important. I mean, it, you know, it, it drain, not only does it drain you, but it just, you know, mentally, it's just, it, it's very, it just makes you feel like there's something wrong with you. And I mean, it, it really affects your, you know, your psyche. And so um, I called this hotline, you know, just, wondering what to do with myself. I said, I, you know, I feel like I could potentially harm myself. And so they told me, you know, to, if I could make it, if I could, if I was able to drive, uh, to come to the emergency room at the hospital, the local hospital. And so that's what I did. And they ran, you know, tests on me, blood and everything, um, and talked to a counselor and she decided she's, you know, she said it's optional at this point, but, I think it would be a good idea if you checked yourself in for a few days. Uh, so that's what happened. Um, and just kind of from there, it just, it was, you know, this, this whole process of 
you know, trying to figure out, figure out what was wrong with me, um, led to some pretty, you know, I mean, pretty, uh, traumatic things and just things kept getting worse and worse. And I just, I didn't know how to deal with it. Yeah. It sounds like it just sort of like you got impacted all at once by a lot of different things that were very, you know, traumatic. And then, you know, they just sort of piled on top of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, um, I should say also that it was just like, you know, one thing after another, um, the day that I got let go for my job, I got laid off. Um, I worked for a small ad agency and I got laid off and I, I kind of knew it was coming. I mean, the, the work had slowed down a lot and I just, I was like waiting for the shoe to drop, I guess. And on that day, on the way home, I was upset, crying and, and all of the things you do when you get let go. Um, and I was rear-ended on the way home on the highway. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm like, all upset about my job ending and just I get rear-ended and that it was just like this ripple effect you know just all of these things and um yeah so I I just felt like I couldn't deal with it I mean I don't know anybody who could just brush that kind of thing off just everything that was you know that was occurring with my health and I mean at that point my relationship with my uh, fiance was still was still strong, but that was, you know, the very beginning. Um, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. And health challenges can take a real toll on your relationships, but I want to go there. Yeah. But before we go there, tell us a little bit about, um, you checked yourself in, what was the experience like? Because, you know, when I think about what I would need in that time, if I was in that frame of mind, I think I would need someplace quiet, someplace safe, someplace where I could rest, someplace where there was maybe some outdoor time, some sunlight, some really good nutritious food to help me get my, you know, my body reset. Is that the kind of experience you had when you checked yourself in? Um, no, it definitely was not. Um, the first place that I mentioned uh, checking into actually was, I was in three places total, three different uh, hospitals throughout this, this period. Um, that was probably the best of the three that I can say because they actually, um, you know, they actually sat us down in groups, you know, we could talk and it was, it was a very quiet environment. Um, but yeah, the, the nutrition piece was somewhat there for that, for that one, but it was still somewhat, you know, lacking. I mean, we had access to snacks that, you know, were probably not the best. I mean, um, like just, what kind you know, of snacks? Um, like, you know, things like crackers and little like cookies, you know, they have like those little hundred calorie type pack things, things like that. Um, so in other words, uh, high carb, you know, processed carb, processed sugar stuff. And I later kind of found out why, um, why that is, uh, <laughs> somebody pointed that out to me. Um, but yeah, it was just, uh, you know, well, so go into that, that. why is that? Why, why do they serve in these facilities? Why do you think they serve high carb, high sugar treats? Um, honestly, I mean, and one of my, one of a friend that I made in there, I mean, he kind of pointed it out. He's like, well, they're, you know, they're, you know, why they're giving us that stuff. Right. I'm like, well, I don't know. Just, I guess, cause it tastes good. I don't know. But he's like, well, it's, it's to keep us, you know, mellowed out basically. Um, you know, you give somebody sugar, obviously sugar is like a drug. Uh, it affects your dopamine receptors in your brain, you know, your reward center of your brain. And it's just, you know, helps calm people down but at the same time you know it's it's not that stuff is not healthy for your body it's not good for your you know your glucose levels or your spikes your blood sugar um but it's just i think you know it was used as a way to keep us all kind of stable and you know just so nothing because i mean i didn't know what to expect um i you know you hear stories about like uh mental, you know, mental health wards and things like that and people doing crazy things. And so, I mean, um, that, but yeah, that hospital particularly wasn't as bad, I would say of the three. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely, you know, um, we're taught to, if something bad happens to us, oh, well, we turn to food, you know, we turn to sugar or, you know, donuts, ice cream, whatever it is. I mean, when you're having a bad time, 
people aren't telling you to eat, go eat some broccoli or here, have an avocado to snack on. I mean, it's like, you know, that's, that's just, that's always, you know, pretty much the way it's been. People, I don't think in the, in the mental health community, um, I know there's some, there, uh, Dr. Kelly Brogan is big on a uh, nutrition component, but there's, you know, a lot of, uh, in conventional medicine, uh, food, you know, even in psychiatry is just not, it's not really talked about. It's just, again, it's like, oh, here, here's a prescription. This will help you feel better um, without any kind of regard to, you know, eating healthier as, a, a, you know, an alternative to feeling better. Um, and that kind of leads up into gut health as well. Um, but yeah, I can, I can tell you too about, you know, the other experiences I've had with, you know, the other two places. Yeah, I would love to hear it, about that. Yeah. I mean the, well, the second one was, um, it is a pretty, you know, highly regarded hospital, um, in the Kansas city area. And, uh, I was seeing a psychiatrist there. Um, at that point, I mean, things had just gotten so bad. Um, I, you know, I was on a couple, trying a different, couple different medications for sleep and just, you know, they'd work temporarily and then they stopped working. Um, but I, came in one day to see my psychiatrist and I, I was just, I was feeling that I started to get that, that overwhelming feeling again, uh, potentially hurting myself. And he's like, well, I think we need to admit you. So it's like, okay, here we go again. And, uh, so I went in there, um, basically same thing. I mean, nutrition, it, it had gotten to the point where nutrition was not, that was completely off the table at this, uh, in this particular hospital. And, you know, there was some junk food. I mean, we did kind of similar thing where we would talk in groups. Um, they would try me on these different sleep medications. And um, I kind of, I, I try to fight them putting me on antidepressants because I just feel like that's not what I needed. You know, I mean, I, yes, I was very down and out, but I knew one of the main reasons why was because my sleep had just, you know, disappeared basically. And so um, I was in there for a few days and actually towards the end, this, this was horrible. Um, I hope that, I, I don't know if this is something that still is going on there, but uh, the, the last day when they were deciding, you know, whether or not I could go home that day, um, I was brought into a room with my psychiatrist and then like three or four other doctors just shut the door and I was just sitting there in a chair. It was like a firing squad. I'm not kidding. Um, they were just asking me all these questions and blah, blah, blah. And they did tons of blood work and, you know, he reassured me. He's like, oh, you know, we'll, we'll get to the bottom of this. We'll figure this out. Why, you know, why this is happening to you. And, uh, it, it was more like a, a blame game of sorts. I mean, they were basically, well, we, we found nothing physically wrong with you. So, you know, this is all like, basically like it was my fault. Like I had brought it all on myself and, you know, because they couldn't find anything medically wrong with me. Um, so they just started, you know, kind of like finger pointing basically. And, um, you know, just, it, it felt very accusatory, just like, you know, it was my fault. Like the whole, this whole series of things, you know, was my fault. And it, it was just very, and I just couldn't, um, I couldn't go back to that psychiatrist after that because I, I just didn't, I didn't trust him anymore. It no longer felt like a warm place or, you know, a, a helpful, um, you know, provider to be able to work with because he just, it's like he turned his back on me or he turned against me basically. And he tried to accuse me of, you know, well, your marriage ending, that was, that was your fault. You know, you brought all that on yourself and just even asking me about, you know, like my, um, my sex life with my husband. And I mean, to me like that, I thought, I don't know what the parameters are for psychiatrists, what they're allowed to ask you, but I thought that was out of line. I mean, like, again, he it just felt like he was blaming me for everything, you know, including uh, my marriage ending. So that was that. Um, the third and final, which was the hardest, um, I actually, it was right around Christmas time and uh, I was home alone. I was still living with my husband at that, at that point. Um, and we, I, I was home by myself, just 
I remember lying in bed one day and I just thought, I can't do this anymore. I just, I can't, I don't know how to deal with this anymore. Nothing had changed. Nothing had gotten better. Um, again, just, you know, trying to get sleep via medication. And, um, I thought about it. I made the decision. I started to write him a note saying that, you know, I could not deal with things anymore and I'm, you know, I'm sorry and I love him. And that was, uh, I, I had access to a lot of pills too, uh, because of, you know, the hospital visits that I had gone through. Um, I mean, they, these, that's the thing, these providers, these doctors, uh, which is, you know, why I'm glad you're doing this, uh, movement because they're so quick to just, oh, well, here's the pill for this. Oh, you have pain. Here's this. Oh, you know, you have insomnia. Here's this. And I mean, I had so many bottles of pills at home at that time. And so it was so easy. It was right there. It was so easy for me to be able to access um, all of those. So I thought I had to like work up my nerve. I was like, I'm going to do this. I can't, I can't live like this anymore. And I took probably, I would say about 60 some pills um, and just like waiting. I didn't know what was going to happen. I just waited and like, I started to feel weird. Like I was going to pass out. I got in the shower and I just, I was like, whoa, what am I doing? Like, why am I doing this? What, you know? And I almost, almost passed out in the shower. Um, I actually started to stick my fingers down my throat to get, get that stuff out of me. And it was just, it was horrible. I just remember shaking and I was on the bed. I was so dizzy. I just went to lie down. Um, and I, uh, before I had done that, I had texted my mom. She was like, you know, are you okay? Do you need me to come over? What's, you know, what's going on? And I was just like, I, you know, and I just sent her a text message saying, you know, I love you. And, uh, I, you know, I called, I actually made the decision. I was like, why I can't, you know, I don't know what's happening. I, I was just, you know, lying there and I called 911. Um, I decided, you know, this is not what I want. I, I, I don't want this to be the end for me. Um, and so they sent several people over um, to the apartment. They were concerned, you know, oh, do you have firearms in the house or anything like that? Um, they took me out on a stretcher to uh, the closest hospital. And um, I, you know, my, my husband was notified. My mom was notified that I was there. And um, so that they, I was, I was basically forced to go into a third and final uh, hospital. And this was a specifically a mental health um, hospital. And, um, you know, at that point, my, uh, my husband had just like, he had checked out emotionally. I mean, all of the, the bills um, that were piling up medical, you know, hospital bills. And he just like, he couldn't deal with me anymore. He just, he didn't, I guess he just didn't have the strength to deal with me anymore. Um, so that hospital, uh, I mean, that, that's where, you know, the guy that I mentioned, I met talking about the different, different types of foods, you know, that, oh, this is why they're giving us this because, you know, of this, uh, they want to mellow us out. Um, that place was, it was insane. Like it was a, I don't know how to describe it, but I mean, just lots of junk food, access to junk food. I mean, I remember the day of Christmas, they gave us these stockings, you know, filled with candy and other things. And, uh, but the, you know, I, I stayed there, I think a total of about four or five days. Um, but there was actually, there's loud music at playing late at night. They did, these nurses didn't care. They didn't do anything about it. Uh, there were people talking up late at night, you know, and you're trying to sleep. Of course, there's no doors. Uh, so you're just like, you just have to kind of try to shut the noise out. And um, they were, you know, all of these desserts, like processed food and just, you know, gross stuff. Uh, and I remember this one guy one night, I think I was already in bed or I was sitting and they had kind of like a common area with a TV and couches and stuff. This guy actually punched a hole in the wall. He had, I don't know, I guess, rage issues, anger issues. And I mean, there, there was one girl that I remember she was just like 
she would just start yelling all of a sudden. And I mean, it was, it was the worst experience I, I could have ever had. And I mean, yeah, beyond that, I just, you know, I, I got out of there after a few days um, with, of course, a nice little list of medications that they wanted to give me. And they, I, I kept refusing antidepressants. I was like, you know, I have sleep issues. Um, I said, this is what I'm really dealing with right now, number one. And, you know, I mean, I just, they put me on so many different things to just try, oh, well, does, does this work or does this work? Um, but yeah, it was just not an environment that was conducive to healing at all. Um, not the kind of place that a person like me needed to be. So. What have you subsequently learned about um, gut health? Because I know you comp- you're, you're doing holistic uh, health coaching now, and you've learned a lot about how, how you know, the gut influences the mood. So tell us a little bit about that now. Um, yeah, so I mean, gut health uh, is definitely very important um, because, I mean, we make, I think it's like 90 to 95% of our serotonin in our gut. Um, so I, I mean, that's, that's pretty significant. Uh, well, definitely very significant. Um, you know, because if you're, you know, you're not getting the serotonin you need. Um, I mean, most conventional medical providers, if you're, if they feel you're lacking, they'll just, they're so quick to prescribe, you know, a SSRI drug or, you know, some other type of drug, um, to get you to, you know, a, a place of happiness. Um, but it's, and it is, it's a known concept, um, but they, instead of, pr- you know, promoting a healthy diet or, um, you know, a probiotic rich diet, and I'm talking about foods, not, not necessarily just like probiotic supplements, but, you know, foods to help naturally uh, improve your gut health and your serotonin levels, um, then, I mean, that's, I just, when I, at least, you know, in my experience, I was never told, you know, hey, you need to look at your diet or what you're eating um, to help with, you know, with those levels. And I mean, there's, there's been all kinds of studies done, um, you know, regarding, uh, you know, gut health uh, with regard to, um, and especially brain health as well. Um, I know the ketogenic diet has been, has you know, been very successful for a lot of people with uh, behavioral issues, you know, children with autism, um, just it's significant, you know, when you are getting rid of those bad foods, um, how much it can, you know, improve your health. And I feel like that kind of came into play for me also, um, because I, you know, once I had, that's later on. (laughs) But once I had, you know, gotten myself into a better eating pattern, um, it, it it was a significant, I felt a significant difference in just how I felt about myself. And so yeah, gut health is, is very, is paramount. (laughs) So what are some of the things that you think helped with your uh, insomnia problem? What, you know, obviously taking all the pills wasn't helping. It was kind of making things worse. Um, what was it that you think helped you to get sleep again, finally? Um, well, I should, I should disclose that. I mean, I, I do still take uh, medication for sleep. Um, I have been to several doctors. I've done sleep study. Um, it's something that still has not been solved. Um, I mean, I think, you know, the, the new, the newer lifestyle that I've adopted with healthy eating and taking care of myself has definitely helped. Um, but that's still one piece of the puzzle that has not been totally figured out yet. Um, and I mean, I hate, I hate the fact that I still rely on that. Um, but I mean, I'm not, I'm not any on any sort of like antidepressant type medications or anything like that. Um, cause I think that's, you know, that's, that's not what I ever needed. And just, you know, the fact that, uh, I do have a thyroid issue I have for eight years now. Um, a lot of doctors won't look at that either as, you know, that, that can cause depression. I mean, a lot of, uh, people that have thyroid issues also have mood disorders or mood issues. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's something that I, I mean, I deal with it. Um, I deal with it the best way I can. And I, you know, I try to, 
I try to just keep myself going every day. And, um, but yeah, a lot of it is uh, just adopting a healthier lifestyle. Uh, that was, that was essential in, in my healing. And so what, what, what point did you learn about the ketogenic diet and what impact did that have on your well-being? Um, well, ketogenic, I'm actually, um, I'm, I'm just paleo myself, um, but ketogenic is kind of, I guess you could say like kind of a cousin to paleo, uh, because it's, you know, it's very low carb, um, high fat or, you know, medium, moderate fat protein. Um, but it, yeah, it's, it's, and keto has been around for years. I mean, I know it's, it's kind of a buzzword right now. Um, it's becoming like a popular thing, but I mean, it actually, it's been around for over a hundred years. Um, doctors, you know, had, had adopted this approach to, you know, a higher fat diet. We need fat, uh, to feed our mitochondria, to feed our brain and function properly. Um, so yeah, keto has been studied, you know, with Parkinson's, um, Alzheimer's. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, doctor, uh, I think it's, I think it's Dale Bredesen wrote a book called the end of Alzheimer's, um, and then uh, Dr. David Perlmutter, um, he's a neurologist, and he wrote uh, Grain Brain. And I mean, there's a lot of uh, evidence and things being studied uh, showing that those, um, even just like behavioral children with behavioral problems uh, can, have, can see significant changes um, by lowering, you know, their... Um, you know, their carb, just getting rid of, you know, process, process carbs altogether. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's really exciting. And I, I really, I would like to see personally, because I've seen kind of both sides, uh, with, uh, thyroid disease. Um, some experts are kind of, they're okay with people with hypothyroidism being on a keto diet. I mean, I've heard, I've talked to people that are doing it and it works well for them, but then there's some other experts that say, well, you know, with thyroid, glucose uh, is what helps you, you know, with helps you convert, you know, and produce thi uh, thyroid hormones in the first place. So if you're too low carb, you know, you're going to feel, you're going to feel horrible. Um, so that's something I would really like to see more evidence on and more, just more research on. Um, because I, I've kind of looked at it myself. I don't, I don't know that I could do it because I, I think like, you know, one sweet potato and some, you know, something like a little, a piece of fruit would knock me straight out of ketosis in one day. Um, <laughs> but it's, so it's, yeah, I mean it, but it, it's definitely, it, and for, as far as weight loss goes, um, I mean, it's, it's very effective. Uh, but yeah, paleo has, you know, has been very successful for me. Uh, as far as getting, you know, my health back on track and getting my weight um, back to, you know, ideal, ideal. So, yeah. so what are some things that you uh, do to manage your insomnia that you would recommend to others? I know you're taking the pills and that's part of your strategy right now. And, you know, Skills Not Pills movement isn't about like shunning all pills. I know I've said this in yeah. several broadcasts. It's about being conscious and mindful of intentionally choosing it if you're going to choose it as part of your overall strategy, which is what you've done. So what are yeah. some other things that you also do to help yourself with your insomnia? Um, I mean, I take, uh, I mean, I try to get outside when I can, but I take vitamin D3 every day. Um, I, without fail because, um, they, I mean, much of the population is vitamin D deficient and they've actually, um, They've done some research, uh, especially over in most, mostly in Europe, but just how um, depression actually can be linked um, to uh, vitamin D deficiency in a lot of people. Um, and they, they're not quite sure if it's like, you know, the chicken or the egg yet, like if, you know, the uh, decreased vitamin D causes depression or if depression causes increase or decreased vitamin D levels. Um, but there's, you know, they've done research to show that there is, you know, vi your vitamin D levels can affect, uh, can affect your mood. Um, so yeah, that's, that's something I do. Um, and I mean, just basically, I know like self-care means something different to everyone, but I mean, just, you know, taking care of myself. And I mean, I'm, I'm one of those very active people like go, go, go all the time. And I try to, I need to slow down. I, you know, I learned in my training as a health coach that, you know, I, 
I need to slow down once in a while. So that's something that um, I'm, I'm trying to get better at. Um, I went to this place called the meditation bar the other day Mm -hmm. and you just, it's just a meditation class. Like you go there and they do guided meditation for 30 minutes and it was great. Like I felt so much better after that. And I have trouble meditating on my own because I just, my, I like, I get inside my head and just the chatter and everything in my head. And I'm just like, I can't. Okay. But if somebody leads me, I can, I can do it. And it, it and it feels good. I felt, I felt great after. And I definitely want to, that's something I want to do, do more of, but just, you know, getting outside, getting, you know, getting the natural vitamin D, um, the, they talk about like the seasonal affective disorder. Um, people think, oh, it's mostly in the winter, but they, they, now they're showing that people are getting that in the summertime because we're not spending as much out, outdoor time. Um, we're spending time, you know, in the air conditioning, especially in Texas. Yeah. Um, so people, people are not getting, you know, adequate vitamin D levels and sunlight that they need. Um, and it, it, I mean, I don't care how bad of a day you're having. If you, if you go outside and it's sunny and you just walk around, I mean, you're going to feel a little bit better or maybe a lot better. You know, it's, I think it's inevitable. (laughs) So. Great. Well, those are great tips. Uh, so I know that you're offering, uh, a little discovery call to people that are interested in, you know, knowing a little bit more about what you do and that your website is Austin Paleo Girl. So Austin Paleo, P-A-L-E-O, and then G-R-R-L, and that's .com. That's also in the description. So you guys can find out more about Rachel on her website. And you do a blog, right? You blog about paleo, paleo. Yeah, paleo, yeah, the, kind of the whole lifestyle and just um, different, you know, I, I'm really big on um, entrepreneur entrepreneurism, uh, for especially for women. Um, that's something that I never uh, thought I would be. Um, until, and again, this kind of goes back to just, um, my whole experience moving to Austin, um, just deciding to eat better, um, get, you know, I had to get myself out of the, the rabbit hole that I had gotten into. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I decided to become a health coach because I found out that, you know, nutrition was key in my personal healing. And I know that, you know, I, I can help a lot of other people you know, with the same issues, whether it's thyroid or, you know, depression and things like that. And I think it's, um, you know, depression is still very, it's very much a stigma that, you know, oh, well, this only happens to certain people or it's, you know, and I mean, and, you know, recently we had, you know, we lost two famous people um, because they, you know, they just, and everybody thought, oh, they're Anthony Bourdain on top of the world, right? I mean, it had everything going, but I mean, he had, he had ongoing things that, you know, not everybody knew about. And it's just, you know, I, I want people to know that it, it doesn't, depression doesn't discriminate. It, it's, it can happen to anybody, you know, uh, whether it's, you know, over a period of years or like my, in my case, over a period of a few months. So, yeah, but I, yeah, I really, I'm really big on, you know, just mental health awareness and uh, advocating for women's health. So, well, thank you so much for being brave and coming on and sharing your story and yeah, so thank you apparently and really sharing out uh, the details. I think, uh, you know, not a lot of people have been inside the a mental health facility like that and don't really maybe know what goes on or, or how yeah. it is structured. And I got to say, when you were telling me offline before we did this interview, I was really shocked. Uh, I had no idea that it would be like that. Um, I guess yeah. I had this idea that, you know, you get to like curl up in a nice, you know, rocking chair with a blanket or something. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, it's, not. I mean, it definitely changes definitely need to be made. I mean, I, I think there probably are facilities out there like that, that take more of a holistic approach that actually talk about like the mind, body, you know, just everything. Um, but yeah, just when you're talking about, um, you know, regular, regular hosp- conventional hospitals. Um, it's, it's very, it's a flawed system. I mean, it, it really is. It's just not. Then um, I think that's partially why a lot of people relapse and they have to go back to another facility and another, and you know, who knows how long that can go on. Yeah. But. It seems to me like if somebody's ending up in a spot like that, um, 
that some education needs to take place about correct eating, correct diet, self-care, you know, uh, processing your emotions. You know, there's a whole list of things that we're actually teaching on Skills Not Pills movement that would help any person that's in that spot. And I can speak to that and I can make that claim because I also have been a person that's come to the brink of that suicidal place and pulled myself back out again several times. So Mm -hmm. I know what it takes to pull yourself out of that spot. And I know that, you know, when I'm practicing healthy nutrition, good mental health, when I'm, you know, taking care of myself, when I'm getting outside enough, when I'm practicing self-care, those kinds of things don't happen. You know, if, if difficult things happen, you're much more resilient handling those difficult things. Definitely 2018, big banner year for Gary Hummingbird and yes. uh, a lot of changes and a lot of things all at once, just like you were talking about, things that used to would have sent me over the edge. And this year, because of the work that I do with myself and with clients and the work that I've learned how to do, you know, I had a few days where I needed to just curl up in a ball. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people could agree that there are days where they just need to curl up in a ball. So it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And I mean, we're, we're so digitally connected nowadays too. It's just like, you know, it's, I think sometimes I think I need to do a digital detox. Digital detox. (laughs) You know, just like get off, you know, get off social media, just, you know, talk to human beings, you know, either on the phone or in in person, like, you know, like they did in the good old days and, um, just keep, I, and that's another thing it's important is, you know, the human connection. I mean, if you have someone to talk to, um, even if it's just a counselor, you know, um, I mean, people, people need that. They need to get their, their feelings out, their emotions out, or else, you know, that's when problems can happen. I mean, if, if you don't have someone that you, trust that you can go to, uh, to talk to things. That's, you know, it's very important. And just you make an action. Yeah. And just, you know, doing daily little, little things for yourself to, you know, whether it's, I don't know, just like doing your hair or putting nail polish on or, um, going for a walk, you know, just, uh, reading, reading a good book or a, a book that makes you feel good or listening to, uh, a podcast. Like I love quote of the day show. Uh, that's my favorite podcast. Uh, cause it's just like daily inspiration and it's, it's great. It, I mean, it makes you think a lot about yourself and, you know, look, look within yourself. But and there's lots and lots of modalities of healing that as you get down this pathway, uh, you start finding out about a lot of different, uh, healing methods that open things up that you didn't even know was a possibility. So mm-hmm. yeah, actually when we get off this call, I'm going to recommend some for you for your ongoing insomnia and see if those are pathways you want to pursue. But yeah, it's, it's amazing that experts are coming out and sharing their wisdom on skills, not pills. So come check out our website. I I'm doing a little pre-announcement today. I'll just, you know, for those of you who hung it, hung in there for the whole broadcast, I'll let you know that the website is live. So skills, not pills, movement.com. <laughs> And you can sign up for a membership. And there's even like a little video walking you through the back end membership so you can see what's there. And it's really reasonable to get started. It's like $9.99 a month. And you get access to like over 50 experts. You get access to all these interviews. And it's really great stuff. And uh, it's starting, we're kicking it off in, in August with lots of different experts contributing monthly skills, DIY, meditations, and other tools and resources to help you on your journey. So Hope you guys go check it out, skillsnotpillsmovement.com. And thanks again, Rachel, for being with us today. Thanks, Carrie. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Okay, talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye.